Okay, so you've made it this far. This is where things start to get really interesting. We're going to discover together how to share an application's window inside Ecamm. Well, discover for you, but I'm showing you, I'm your navigator, I'm your Sherpa for application sharing, right? This is a way for you to share what's happening on your computer with your audience. And of course, yes, there are certain things that you want to share and there are certain things that maybe you don't want to share. That's okay. The point of this particular lesson is that we want to get you to a point where you can feel confident sharing a web browser, sharing a keynote, PowerPoint, or even an application that I don't even know about. Maybe it's an internal application. Maybe you're trying to do a training video series for your own company and you wanna show them how to navigate. Maybe you got some new hires and you're saying, okay, here's the new hire portal. Here's your onboarding process, for instance, just an example. Those kinds of things you can do through Ecamm and you can do it pretty easily and then you just record it and then put it out on your internal web server and off to the races you go. Or if you're also trying to demonstrate an application or Ecamm also has a, what they call live demo mode where you can display everything that's going on inside Ecamm. Now, for me, this is important because I'm able to show you what's happening on my Ecamm screen. You may not necessarily want to show people what's happening behind the scenes, who's pulling on what ropes, those kinds of things. So live demo mode may not be as important to you or as interesting to you, but I'll show it to you anyway, just in case you want to show people. And live demo mode is also really good for when you need support with Ecamm. So uh, Ecamm will often ask you if you're contacting the support department directly, they'll ask you, can you send me a copy of your log if you're having problems? And if you can back up that log with the actual behavior of what's happening on your Ecamm screen by showing it in live demo mode. Live demo mode simply means it's demo mode. It's you're, you're, you're recording the entire Ecamm screen not just an application. And so that that allows them to see what you're seeing and maybe hopefully troubleshoot things. This also works great in the user community. And then finally, we're gonna have to talk about this. I waited all the way until this lesson, you know, this is halfway through, copyrights and things that could get you in trouble if you don't get permissions ahead of time, if you're using other people's content. Uh, certainly if you are streaming content from another company, there are things that YouTube can do to you to make your life very difficult. And if even if you're not on the YouTube platform, if somebody else decides to record what you're presenting and that presenting presentation includes copyrighted material, you could find yourself in a lot of hot water. So let's try and avoid that. And I'll take you through some of the things that could potentially lead to what's called a copyright strike or just a, a nasty cease and desist letter from a corporation's lawyers. We don't like those. All right, so let's get rolling with this lesson. One of the things that as somebody who's probably used video conferencing or video sharing software before, you may have encountered is people sharing applications or their desktop. And generally speaking, it's just like looking at somebody else's computer. What I mean to say by that is it's largely uninteresting, right? If they're trying to demo a feature or if they're trying to show a PowerPoint presentation, they're lame. I mean, let's be honest there. You've seen enough of them at this point to where you're like, you know, it's so easy to tune out, especially when people can't see you. <laughs> I know I've been there. It's fine. But the thing about Ecamm that sets itself apart from all these other applications that it allows you to use the power of Ecamm to make your screen shares look so much better, so much better. And so what we're going to do is create a couple of screen shares inside the Ecamm scene that we've been creating, the profile we've been creating up until this point. If you 
have deleted your profile or anything like that, that's fine. You can work with a blank scene, uh, whatever you want to do. You can work with a blank scene. At this point, you should know how to pull in your camera if you want to. It's totally up to you how you want to lay this out, but we're going to work with, uh, in, in my case, we're going to work with the screen that we've been setting up and been playing with so far with the intro, main, and outro. All right, so let's get into it. So here I am back on my screen, everybody, and I just noticed that my camera, there we go. See, when you're using a camera that's got a MagSafe adapter on the back, it can kind of skew like this. So anyway, let's roll into this. So how do you screen share? Well, you may recall from way back, we did uh, a, a very easy screen share where we used uh, Activity Monitor as an example. And this is very similar to that, really. So what's going to happen here is we're going to create another screen share, but we're going to do it First way we're going to do it is kind of similar to what we did before. And then I'll show you dragging and dropping a screen share into your window. And then finally, we'll create a keynote slide that you can then share to your audience that looks far beyond anything like you would ever do inside of keynote by itself. And all the time you're sharing an applications window, which is great because it means it's dynamic. I would say something along the lines of when it comes to requirements, hardware requirements, you can work, you can certainly work with one screen, but if you have even an iPad as a secondary screen, it's really nice to have because that means you can take your presentation application. So for instance, Keynote, and I can run Keynote on that second screen off to either side of the computer. Duet display, Duet display, whatever you want to call it, does have that capability. And if you have an iPad, you can use that. Or if you have an external monitor, anything you can hook up, it just helps so much. I don't know many Ecamm users who have just one monitor because when they're when they have complicated setups. If you're doing just a straight out presentation that just requires your interaction with Ecamm, sure, yeah, you don't need another monitor. But if you're going to start rolling in other applications, websites, that kind of stuff, it's probably a good idea to have one or something that, you know, taking an iPad and turning it into a monitor temporarily while you're doing your presentation, all right? So, first things first. Let's uh, let's talk about sharing an applications window. This is really straightforward. So down in my overlays panel here, if I click right here, it looks like a computer monitor, click there and it pulls up my screen. Now notice it's my desktop. And why is it my desktop? Well, if I click on the edit button here, you can say, you look up at the, up here, it says show entire screen. Okay, I don't want that, but I want it to show something else. Unfortunately, I don't have anything else to show at the moment. So let's fire up another application. Let's say I'm trying to do a motion product demonstration. I wanted to show people how to use Apple Motion. So I could click on the motion icon. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just getting it to a point where I can... Um, start demonstrating its capabilities. So what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to, if I, what, there's two things I can do. First things first, let's, let's just tell this to, instead of sharing the entire screen, we're going to tell it to share motion. So now it's sharing the motion window, which is great. And we're going to put that over here. Now you don't need my mug on the screen, full screen like this. So let's go ahead and shrink down my window, right? And we'll turn this shape into something like a circle. So it just has me. And then I'm going to take my motion share window and put that kind of full screen. Now, what happened to me? Well, remember, everything is stacked here. So 
the screen share is going to be on top of the camo camera. If I drag the camo camera to the top, there I am. And I can do something like this. And let's just zoom in a little bit more. All right. So I am looking at the Apple Motion display. So now let's go into Motion. All right. And see, there it is. And I'm just going to create a uh, motion project. Click open. And there I am. Now, let's go back into Ecamm. You can see now in Ecamm, I am seeing the entire motion interface. So as I demonstrate these features, they will show up inside of Ecamm because I'm sharing the entire motion window. So for instance, like if I went in here, now this is, again, this is where having two monitors really does come in handy because you're really, you, you can't see what's going on inside Ecamm. So this is a great way, if you take motion, put it off on another screen, you can see what your audience is seeing in Ecamm. Not asking you to buy another monitor, you don't have to, but it just makes life a lot easier. All right, so let's just go ahead and create a shape. And uh, in this case, I'll create a circle and drag it out. All right, here's my circle shape. Oops, we don't need that. And then I'll go back to select here and behaviors and basic motion. For instance, I could tell it to uh, move and so i've got it here and then i go over here and you see it's moving and i can you know i get basically i've got a motion going now okay it's really simple really lame animation but i've got this working now if i go over to ecamm you can see well okay so here's another example of why you're doing that so motion just stopped all right, motion actually stopped playing back because I'm in Ecamm now. And I think motion does that to kind of keep the resource utilization on your computer from going out of control. So <clears throat> if you had a second monitor, um, I might be able to scale this down a little bit. Let's see, go back into Ecamm. And come on, let's get this all centered up. So this is where things get a little bit wonky and I'll show you what's going on in just a second. Uh, let me lock this screen share so it is set. And now I'll move the Ecamm window over and let's see if this works. So I'll tell it to play. Nope. So see, yeah, you just can't do it. Yeah, motion is going to say, nope. So this, <laughs> if you had motion on your computer or any other application, you can get it to fill this window. Now you notice here, there's a margin. There's a little bit of a margin going on here. And why is that? Well, part of it is because your motion window is not the same aspect ratio as your Ecamm window. So I should be able to theoretically drag out and let me go here. I got to see my Ecamm window. All right, so I'm basically filling it up. The larger I make it inside of the main window, it will get rid of that crop inside Ecamm. So it's all based on ratios. Right, there are some features. Sometimes what you can do inside your screen share, if I click on that, uh, you can say zoom to app windows. If I turn that off, it, you notice it'll it'll zoom, it'll reduce that zoom. And what happens is now I can uh, if I if I leave this alone, go into my screen share. Let me let me zoom out. Of it here and remember our option keys right so this is for doing layout stuff so let's uh, let's go ahead and use our option key 
to crop this display like so. So you get it basically the exact same size as your application. And so now, now I've got a window that I can zoom in on in, in Ecamm. And it is the right aspect ratio, and I don't have to worry about margin issues or anything like that not showing up. So this gives you an idea of what it's like to share an application. Now, keep in mind, the application needs to be running. It needs to be up. Because if you do something like this, if you minimize that application, look what happens. It goes away inside Ecamm, too. So that is a normal behavior, and that's the way it's supposed to be, because what it's doing is it's grabbing your uh, display, and it is also uh, taking, a, basically, it's taking an image of what your display is. And if you move things off your display, even if you move them out of, just off to the edge where part of the application is extending beyond the visible screen, wonky things can happen. So again, yet another reason why a secondary monitor would be useful in the screen sharing application world. Um, also, let me go back to, I'm gonna set this to uh, my entire desktop here. Yeah, I got it set to entire screen. And we'll lock that down again. Now, let's see here. Get rid of that. Turn that off. First of all, you can see that it's not it's not sized correctly. So I could go in to something like this and say screen aspect. I could go into widescreen mode, uh, screen aspect. Secondary screen. I don't have a secondary screen, but let's see what happens there. No? Interesting. Um, entire screen. There we go. And you should be able to see. Okay, yeah. See that other stuff that's up there? And you should see, of course, any folders or anything that I have there. I don't know if you recall when we were going over the user interface talking about the preferences section. But if you go to preferences here and you do screen sharing, you can say include your desktop picture or include the desktop icon. So if I turn that off, notice what happens now. See that? So if you have, let's say you have a messy desktop, which I would say probably 90, 95% of us do. This is a quick way to just hide that mess and all the icons on your desktop will just go away only during screen share. They are still there. If you notice on the screen, they're still here. They're just not being shared to your audience, which is probably a good thing. Uh, and then desktop picture, you can turn that off too. And I don't know why it's picking that one, but um, <laughs> that's interesting. I don't know what it's deferring to there, but you can see now I've got my um, my screen, let's go back and that's set to screen aspect ratio, which is using the aspect ratio of your Macintosh. And I, oh, I, I must've hit the, so, you know, on a lot of Mac, if you use the, um, the touchpad, the, the, the trackpad, you can rotate if you just twirl your fingertips around on it. And that's exactly what I did. I did something like this. So I can get that back real quick. I can just go into um, my edit. I can click on the edit for the screen share here and set my rotation back to zero. There we go. Ah, phew. <laughs> Sometimes you, you're like, what happened there? So this, and this is also a lesson that I think when you're assembling a scene, once you've got something in place that you don't want to move again, always remember, go over to your, your overlays panel and hit that lock icon. Because once you hit that, I can't, I can't move it. It's just going to move the whole display. Now I can go over to my camera window and move it because that's not locked. 
right? But if, as soon as I lock that, now the whole screen's moving. And that's Ecamm's way of saying there's nothing on the screen that you can move. And also you can see a little, uh, not error, but a, a little message be, uh, shows up at the center of the screen here that says overlay locked. And then you can click on unlock and it'll unlock that overlay right there. Same thing with this guy. If I try and move it, well, it's going to go to the under. Let's see if I, yeah, it's going to go to the one underneath. Um, but that's an interesting little feature. So I wonder if I do this, if I click that. What did it, oh yeah, unlock the camera. There you go. So you wanna start with your top level first because once you unlock underneath, it'll take over when you're trying to move things around. All right, I hope you are following along here. If not, you can go back and watch it again. But screen sharing starts with proper sizing of your windows and getting everything looking uh, nice with the margins exactly like you want it. And in the case of when I'm doing a product demonstration like this, um, I want to maximize the applications window, but still have a connection with my audience through this little uh, camera window that appears here. So that's, at least that's how I would do it. Okay, so let's say I want, I want to do something else. I want to do another... Uh, screen share. So I'm right now I'm screen sharing my desktop. I don't want this. So I'm going to turn that off. And now what I want to do is I want to screen share something from Safari. Now, can you screen share Safari itself? I've got it running right now, right? And I've got my uh, our, our uh, YouTube channel up here on Safari. So can I share that well sure so i could go into i could go right into uh for instance my screen sharing instead of selecting uh keynote i could say current application so current application in this case is going to be safari and let's see here come on sometimes this little you got to kind of kick it in the head Let's see, come on, Safari. And of course, what I mean by kicking it in the head is sometimes you need to toggle the visibility. <clears throat> and I've noticed that that will now bring up, in this case, I wanna share Safari. And so you can see now, Safari is shared and did I rotate it again? I sure as heck did. Okay. And then I'm going to use the option key again to resize my window around Safari's window. So this is my application. And now I've, I have Safari in a window. Um, now I can remember because this is a shared application, really all I'm doing here is I'm sharing the window of Safari. If you actually want to control Safari, that's another method. And we're going to take a look at that in a moment, but you have all the functionality of all your other overlays. So, so for instance, if, uh, if I wanted to, uh, change the aspect ratio, if I wanted to put a border on there again, I could do that. And then again, that breaks it apart from the background, which we don't have of any anything right now. We can put some backgrounds on there. I just actually, let me see if I have one. I do have one and I will show you it. I downloaded it earlier. And this one, it's a little bit, it's not necessarily going to work for what we're doing here, um, but it, it, well, it'll work, but it's not going to be the best. Okay, so I'm going to drag this beneath my screen share. So now <clears throat> what I've got is a screen share window that I can zoom in and size up. And it's kind of in between 
these two bulbs. I'll show you a cool little effect towards the end of the lesson. But you can see now, this is way better than, if you, if you put any application in this window, this is way better than anything that you would get when you're sharing a, an application. It just, it's more engaging and you put other graphics on here, it looks better. It just, it, the overall look is better and that's what you're trying to achieve with Ecamm. So this screen sharing allows you to superimpose any screen share over any background. You can pull in your cameras, all that stuff. That's, that's the beauty of Ecamm. It makes it really, really simple to do. Now let's, uh, let's go ahead and get rid of this background and let's see, we'll take care of this guy and trash it. You can also, if I want to get rid of the screen share, for instance, I can just drag it off and it goes away. <clears throat> and now let's say I want to use a URL and I want to be able to demonstrate the functionality or other things inside of Safari or uh, yeah, basically Safari. So what I can do is I go back into Safari here and instead of drag, instead of selecting the window through a screen share, what I'm going to do is click on the URL icon or, and then the URL next to it to Ecamm. And there it shows up. Now, if I uh, notice that it's, uh, it's a white mode instead of dark mode, um, I can change all those settings. Let's just go ahead and zoom in here a little bit on the window. And then I'll click on this little button here and that allows me to interact and I can tell it device theme, dark theme. And there we go. So now I've got the actual, so if I'm trying to tour people around a website, for instance, this is the best way to do it because now I'm, I essentially have a window into that web page. And if I like, for instance, if I want to make this bigger, I can make it bigger and come all the way over this way. And again, we want to put that beneath my camera. And if I wanted to do something fun, like maybe give it a little perspective, I could do that and maybe a little outline. Pick my outline color. There we go. And now I've got my window appearing inside of uh, Ecamm. Now I go back to control and now I can scroll through the website. So for instance, if I wanted to highlight or if I want to talk about a specific video, I could click on that video and it'll pull it up inside of this window. And I'm operating the web browser widget just as if I was inside Safari. Uh, so this includes like controls. So for instance, if I wanted it to be in theater mode, oh, sorry, I, this is a, uh, okay. So this is something that you have to be careful about. And this is why I tend not to use perspective. It's not, I like perspective, but I don't think it's a fully baked feature yet, meaning there's some quirks to it. So I'm going to set this back to zero, but what's happening is it was, it was offsetting my click. So I thought I was clicking on mini player, but I wanted it to be in theater mode, which is like that. And I think that just has to do with the way the perspective move is moving things and where your mouse is clicking is different on the website. So if you have any problems with that, just turn off your perspective and then make the changes you want to make and then go back after that. So here I've got my video playing from YouTube. Now I can navigate this if I'm trying to show people a uh, demonstration about what I do. If somebody's like, well, can you give me examples of stuff you work on? Yeah, sure. Let's go through it. And I can do this and I can still, again, have my camera view here and I've got the video playing in the background. I could also add my audio. So I, I don't have the audio turned on right now. <laughs> so we won't hear the audio at the moment. But um, let's say, for instance, I don't want all this other stuff. I do. 
I like the look that it looks like I'm looking at YouTube. For me, personally, I think that this look works. But let's say I want to get rid of that and just focus on the video part. Well, if you hold down the option key, the good old option key, it allows me to trim that up and get the... Oops, we don't want to do that. So here, here's a quick way to avoid that mess. Okay, let's go over here. Okay, there we go. Not sure what happened there, but we're not going to worry about that right now. But you get to see your instructor make some harebrained problems, too, or to deal with some harebrained problems, too. So we'll use the option key. Oh, now we don't want to copy it. Option. And we will drag it down, drag it down, and then drag this side up. And there you go. And now you have a YouTube video playing off the YouTube website inside of Ecamm. Works pretty well. There are some gotchas to this, though. The first thing is that sometimes the content creators themselves put restrictions on whether or not that content can be viewed outside of YouTube. And if you're trying to pull a URL off of YouTube, let's say you're trying to put in a specific video URL, and it says, sorry, this video can't be played or something like that, that's the restriction. The content creator has decided, I don't want this being played anywhere else except on YouTube so that they are afforded the particular copyrights that they believe they're entitled to. So you have to be careful about that. If you have any issues, says, sorry, the video can't be played or something like that. Usually what works is if you create a widget that goes to the YouTube page and then you navigate around so you get the video you want usually that'll play across and you shouldn't have any problems. But you can see here, well, there's now a bunch of me, but you can see I can cover this up, for instance. And now I've got my YouTube video playing on the screen. So I'm sharing Safari, but people don't know that. They think I'm sharing YouTube. I'm sharing a Safari window into the YouTube website. So any website you could take, you know, if you're trying to take somebody through... For instance, if I wanted to go to Ecamm, I don't need to create another one of these if, if I don't want. Let's say I don't want to be going to the YouTube Basecamp uh, site. I can click on the little gear icon next to the name, type edit widget, and we're going to call this HTTPS colon slash slash www.ecamm.com. And then we'll call this Ecamm. And it should fill entire frame safe. Okay, so I kind of goof there. Another goof mess up. If uh, if I go to click this, um, let's say I was on YouTube, and I go to edit widget, instead of typing in H the, the full URL, just type in www.ecam.com, and then you can say fill entire frame if you want, or just click save. And now you've got your window, and now I can move this around. So um, let's uh, now I'm missing some graphic in elements from their website. So uh, I'm going to use the option key again and drag down to expose more of the website. There we go. And that's what you would see. I wonder if I can, can I cram that? No. Okay, that Ecamm's fixed. So now what I have is Ecamm's website inside of Ecamm. This, by the way, is Marshall. Marshall's a guy who's responsible for creating that rotating logo and some graphic elements. So... This is a way to share Safari is through a URL widget. We're not going to go into widgets beyond that for the purposes of this course, but widgets can also be a lot of other things 
not just a website. So uh, it is a way to integrate external elements, externally driven elements into your presentation. For instance, uh, you could put in the weather for your location. Uh, you could put in a ticker. You could do a lot of different things that are actually web widgets that use external data sources to generate whatever it is that they're showing you on the screen. And you can overlay those in your Ecamm feed. Again, that's outside the scope of this particular course, but it is something that you, you can do. And you've essentially created a widget right here by using the YouTube website and then going to the Ecamm website. Okay, so this is one way to share applications. The last one we're gonna do is another local application and that is Keynote. So how do you integrate Keynote or PowerPoint into your overall stream? This is something that I'm sure a lot of you would like to do and so I think it's important to cover in the introductory, the beginner course, because you'll want to do it. And of course, with all the other knowledge you've learned about putting other applications into your Ecamm window, it's obviously something that would be beneficial to your audience if you're trying to put together a presentation. You don't want to have to share the entire, e uh, I'm sorry, you don't want to have to share the entire keynote window if you don't want to, but you can. But the cool part is, is that you can integrate the Ecamm elements on top of your keynote presentation or your PowerPoint presentation. And that's what really sets it apart from anything else anybody else can do. So we're going to get rid of our <clears throat> website here, our web widget, and our camera still here. And I have screen share still here. If you deleted yours for some reason, that's fine. Uh, you can just uh, create a new screen share. Remember, go to this icon here and click plus. And then uh, you're going to set your screen share to the applications that you have available. Now, what I have noticed is that if I turn on the display of the screen share and then I go back to my gear it displays all the applications that are running for some reason when it's hidden when when this is hidden uh, not all the time but I've noticed this when it's hidden it won't populate this menu of what applications see right here it's gone all it says is current application even though that's still running in the background. So let me go ahead and fire up Keynote. And we're just gonna do something real quick in Keynote. So I'll create a new document and I'll make it, uh, it doesn't matter, just make it a widescreen. We don't need the time or the body. Matter of fact, what we'll do is we'll set this type to a uh this will if we go into keynote here we'll set the type to title bullets and photo and or, or actually here you can do title and bullets that's that that one works just fine and what we're going to do is we're going to move our bullets this is really hard to see against a black background i'm sure but we're going to make our bullets be about half the screen and there are no guides for that. Interesting. So we're going to call it, you know, what's new in Ecamm. That'll be our slide. Oops. And then I'm going to type out my bullets. So in this case, uh, enhanced, integrate, uh, scenery, oops, scenery integration and scenery integration is going to be, let's say we'll uh, call it a online collaborative editing platform. Oh, 
Oops, there we go. Thank you, auto correct. Okay, so this is what's new in Ecamm. And so I'm gonna just build a simple little uh, presentation here. So what's new in Ecamm? I'm gonna do an animation here. We'll add an effect. Uh, I'll do something like, uh, let's see, scale big. What does that look like? Okay, there we go. What's new in Ecamm? So I'll leave that as scale big. And then I will go over to my bullets here and my build in effect will be a dissolve. And then I'm going to say by bullet. And now if I preview it, Okay, that's exactly what I want. So I've got my title coming in, right? This is what I'll see. So if I hit the space bar to advance on click, what's well, doing Ecamm, and then I hit the space bar again, and then I just keep hitting it and it'll step through all the bullet points. Now, because I'm running on a single monitor, I'm gonna have this all happen automatically automagically, whatever you want to call it, so that I can quickly switch over to Ecamm. If I was in control of Keynote on a separate window, I could see both at the same time. But unfortunately, with a single window, it makes it a little bit challenging to control your Keynote presentation while you have Ecamm open. It's just, it's not as intuitive as I would have thought it might be, but that's not any fault of Ecamm's or Apple's with Keynote. It's just these applications were not necessarily designed to talk to each other, but we're making it work. So we're going to uh, go to the build order underneath animate here. And if you've never used Keynote, uh, Bradley teaches, uh, Bradley Vinson, he's a, he's a longtime Ecamm user, a uh, guy I really admire and respect. He's got a great teaching style and he uses Keynote to do all kinds of things inside of Ecamm, not just the basic stuff like we're doing today, but all kinds of things. And and I heartily recommend his uh, YouTube, his online classes for using Keynote inside of Ecamm because it's going to go far and beyond what we're doing here today. So I would recommend that if you're looking to enhance your Keynote game, then I would look at his presentations. Okay, so in the build order window here, also he's really good for just teaching people how to use Keynote, because not a lot of people know how it. So the what's new in Ecamm, I'm going to tell it after the transition, so basically when it starts, and I'm gonna tell it to wait five seconds, that gives me time to get over to Ecamm and watch this build up. And then all of these, bullet points I'm going to have after the previous build and there's no delay. So now what happens is if I click play, five seconds goes by, what's in Ecamm, and then this stuff appears. Okay, pretty, pretty, pretty simple, right? So here's where the fun part begins. Let us, we're going to leave this back in this mode at the moment. You don't have to do anything else inside Keynote, right? You've got the bullets building and all that other stuff. That's that's really all you need to do. So we're going to tuck that away for the, sec, for the moment. And I'm going to turn my screen share back on. And I'm going to select Keynote, ah, which won't be in here because it's tucked away. Let's just do this. All right, come on. Keynote, there it goes. If you don't see the application show up, just keep hiding, unhiding, hitting the gear icon. It'll eventually show up. So now I've got Keynote in here. You can notice that it's a little bit off screen, and that is because Keynote itself is a little bit off screen. Remember we talked about the framing, you want to keep everything on screen. And uh, I've also got my border set up here, which is uh, not something I want to do for now. And let's see here, we're going to, 
leave this as is, uh, move my window back over, and then go back in the Ecamm here. So now this is what I'm seeing in Ecamm. This is my Ecamm window, right? Let me, uh, I'll, this is the one time I wanna turn on the controls so you can see the extents. Okay, here's the extents of the Ecamm window. Um, and actually, let's do this. This it, it, You don't have to do this, but um, I think it makes it easier to see what's what. Go into Keynote and create a shape. We'll just create a square. And we'll tell it to go to the back, send them back. Uh, we'll go to Format, click on Green, so it is a bright, bright green. And I select green because these are usually just an indicator that this needs to be transparent. Okay. And if I go to arrange, so it's size 1920 by 1080. One of the nice things about Keynote is you can actually plug in coordinates and sizes as numbers. Ecamm is not set up to do that. It's a drag and drop all over the place. Okay, so what's in Ecamm? There we go. Now, if I go back into Ecamm Live, you can see this is what I'm seeing in my presentation. Now, if I do full screen like that, this is what I'm gonna see. Now, I'm gonna turn this off for the moment. I'm gonna turn off my screen share for the moment, and we need to put a background here. So I will go back to my classes folder here, and there's an Ecamm wallpaper. This is available for download on Ecamm's Discord server. So I'm gonna use this as wallpaper for this particular scene. It'll download and install it. There it goes. Now remember, it puts it at the top, so my camera's gone again. So I'm going to drag that all the way to the bottom. And if I turn on my screen share again, there it is. But you're like, well, Jeremy, what happened to the background? Oh, it's still there. It's still there. But what you need to do is you go over to your screen share. Let's just go ahead and turn it on. And you click the gear icon. And you see this green screen key? Turn that on. And now look what happens. Now you've got... This is your Ecamm window, right? So now what you've got is inside of Ecamm, a keynote showing through, and then the green is being filtered out. Kind of like the green screen that we were talking about when I was in front of the brick wall. Same concept here. You're just using Keynote's green screen background to say that's gonna be transparent. You don't have to use the green screen. If you enable green screen in most cases, it will select the background no matter what. However, if you have any green going on inside your, uh, your keynote presentation, it will also get filtered. So that's something to remember. And so now I've got this up. I've got my background from Ecamm in here. And let's see, and then I've got my share and let's go ahead and see, you notice I can move this. I'm actually moving what looks like the keynote window. And that's not what looks like, it's that's what it is. And let me zoom in a little bit here. So what's in Ecamm? So let's, uh, let's take my photo. Now I could do this, I could go up, up here like I'm doing, and then let's say I wanted to add uh, that that spinning Ecamm graphic to my presentation. Well, it's really easy to do. You just drag and drop it into Ecamm. All right, there it is. And remember, you click on the down arrow next to it, and you tell it to loop, and it'll just keep playing like that. And, and we've got it basically set up. So now if I go into Keynote, click on play, I'll get a huge green screen. And now look what happens.
Okay, so it's kind of there, but not exactly. Why is that? Well, part of it is because the image itself of your Keynote desktop or your Keynote presentation is extending beyond the barrier or the border of the screen share object inside Ecamm. So if I click on the Option key and drag, you can see now, and also I think I might be able to set, yeah, it is set to wide, so that's good. And now I should be able to zoom in on this bad boy. There we go. So now that is full screen. Okay. So let's go ahead and tell Keynote, we want to go back to the beginning. I don't know if it's, is it going to start playing automatically? No. All right. So I'll hit the space bar and I'll come back in the Ecamm. And now it's there. Boom. Done. Done, done. Look, you've got, you now have bullet points that are being generated by Keynote showing up inside Ecamm. This is not the only way to do it, but this is one of the ways to do it. Uh, for instance, let's say, well, you know, I, for instance, you notice that the building of the text was not exactly like you wanted it or may have wanted it. So how about this? How about we take our background here and instead of using a green screen, let's get rid of this. And let's take that Ecamm background that we were just using and we'll use that directly in Keynote. So Ecamm doesn't need to display it. It's in the background. It'll always be in the background. And I'll set send it back. Boom. So now it's there. And then I go back into Ecamm. This is a little little tip for you. If you're using that green screen, green screen, a lot of things won't appear. For instance, if you have set up drop shadows, like here, if I go to style and I tell it reflection, and you see the reflection there. Um, you know, I can adjust that. That kind of looks a little bit hokey, but there, let's do this. We'll turn that We'll do the shadow, drop shadow. And we'll do a blur and a little bit of an offset. Maybe turn down that blur a little bit so you see it pops from the screen. Some people like drop shadows, other people don't. It's up to you. It's a stylistic thing. But now this is what you see in, in, in Ecamm. So when I click on play, I'll still, I this is what, I, you know, Keynote is playing at this point. So that scaling and then the fading in of each one of those bullets. Now let's go into Ecamm. So we'll go back to the top here. And inside Ecamm, right, this is what I'm seeing. Now clearly it's not centered. So I, uh, what I can do, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to delete this screen share and I'll create a brand new one. Oops, not a camera. We don't need that. I'm going to go right here, click on screen share. And we're going to go over here. And we're going to tell it that we want to screen share Keynote. And we're zooming to the window. And so I'm going, and I don't need this, this, uh, you can do hickey. So hold down my uh, my option key to get it cropped correctly. And then zoom this in again using the scroll wheel or pinch to zoom on your trackpad. Basically get it right where you need it. There we go. And now and I've got this guy playing, put him over here. And now what I can do is I'll hit uh, spacebar, come back, 
and watch what happens. See now it's fading in nicely, that scale operation, all that stuff that wasn't showing up when we were using the green screen is now showing up. It is a little bit more processor intensive. It's a little bit more resource intensive, but it looks better, right? And now, for instance, if I, if I want to have something, if I wanted to have a video playing in here, for instance, of what the new features look like, I could put those in uh, to Ecamm. Um, I could go to Ecamm's YouTube page and put that in there like a, a demo of uh, like Doc. Doc is uh, Doc Rock. If you haven't seen him personally or have seen him online, he is a fun dude and he knows his stuff. So we'll go to um, go to YouTube and I should let's see if I type in Ecam. I love the kind of suggestions it gives you when. Uh, <laughs> when it's uh you're not signed in so um i'll go to uh, this one here and so doc is teaching people uh this particular this is a learning ecamm and so i'm going to drag this in to my ecamm window and you see this is where it says your browser can't play this video and they have made it so that that's not possible. That's kind of a bummer, huh? Now, this is a copyright issue. And this is something that I kind of set you up for this. <laughs> I, this is something that, um, depending upon the license that the content creator selected with YouTube, there's a Creative Commons license, that will often play fine. But if they lock it down or they say this is my content, nobody else can use it without my express permission. YouTube will not allow you to stream it. There are ways, there are ways to get YouTube videos down, but we're not going to do that. I'm not going to teach you about that right now in this class, uh, but you can see this won't work. Now, if I delete this as a widget, and what if I were to create a screen share? And that screen share is Safari. Let's get this. And I think I can turn off my comments. All right, so now we, that's on. Let's go to Ecamm. And look at this. Doc's in the house. And this is pretty cool. So now um, I can step through the video in Safari. Let me uh, get him sized up. And, oh, yeah. see, this is when you're grabbing the edges of something, sometimes that can, and it's right aligned with uh, your, um, if, it's, if it's aligned with the base of your Ecamm window, you're going to see, you won't be able to grab it. You have to move it off the edge. Otherwise, it thinks you want to size in the main Ecamm window. But you can see now Doc is doing his demo. And we're rocking and rolling. Now this is this is kind of pushing the boundaries. You can see I'm getting a little bit choppy. And Doc's feed is let me go um he's actually talking about widget overlays here. But um let me uh, let me go into Safari real quick, and I'll just jump ahead. Let 
So you can see this is what Doc looks like when he's talking, right? You see it's kind of a natural movement. Let me move this so it's more on screen and then go over here. Whoops, not that one. So you can see it's a, it's a bit choppy. The frame rate is lower. Um, and this is why using widgets is better because widgets can run up to uh, 30 frames a second. And um, as long as your Mac can handle it, it'll be fine. Um, so let's say I want, you know, layout wise, if I wanted to move Doc down, but I still wanted the Ecamm logo to be on top of that, um, I could move that up and now that's overlaying on top of him. So on my Mac mini behind me, that can render this no problem. Uh, but the Intel MacBook Pro, you know, I start running into little hiccups like that. So that's why it's choppy. So if you're seeing this, if you're seeing, you know, your feeds or things are starting to kind of lag a little bit, it's not Ecamm, it's, it's your computer. Unfortunately, you're trying, you're asking your computer to do a lot and this isn't even recording or streaming it. This is just setting it up. <laughs> so you have to keep that in mind, right? That's something that you definitely have to remember is that there's certain things that certain computers can do. And I, finally, I had, I had been working on Ecamm on my MacBook Pro for two months and I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take the, the lag. I couldn't take the, the speed problems that I was having. So I cut all this out and I just, I ditched it. And I got, and I mean, it's my, it's a great demo machine, but it also shows the limitations of Ecamm on older architecture. Intel architecture on the Mac is now very much old school. Uh, Intel uh, is, it, it is not what it used to be in terms of the speed and performance now that Apple's introduced the M processor. So I would definitely recommend an M2 or M3 or whatever is the most current model when you're doing this much graphical work. And it doesn't look like a whole heck of a lot, but basically you have a whole application running in full screen mode, plus you're running a, a pixel by, you see, I'm already my system's running out of application memory. There you go, right there. Nothing I can do about it. So uh, I don't want to end Ecamm Live, but I am now officially hosed. So this is a perfect opportunity to switch back to my full screen and talk about copyrights. So you saw in the last uh, video that we tried to pull in, we were we were running into issues with this video can't be played. It's unfortunate, but that happens. You know, that's just something that the content creators have said, nope, unless you get our permission, we're not going to give you the ability to play this on any other window except through YouTube's website on whatever browser you're using. So you have to deal with these kinds of issues. So, um, yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have problems like this, and I'm actually I'm gonna shut down my Mac right now because I can, and I'm gonna come back to it. And uh, wow, it's nice and quiet now because the fans don't sound like jet engines. But I'll have that come back. <clears throat> but you can see what can happen. And I'm I don't I like again I don't think I'm doing anything particularly intensive, but that's me. Um, the way. The Mac behaves is entirely different. The Mac's like, no mas, you know, I, I can't do it. And this is what will happen. So I don't particularly like showing system level crashes, but that was not Ecamm crashing. That was your system, my system saying, I'm done. I can't handle this anymore. This is too much. You're throwing too much at me. So you would think that that wouldn't do too much, but unfortunately it does. Even with 32 gigabytes of memory, it really has everything to do with the architecture. Uh, other things to avoid with copyrights. Music. Music is a big one. Uh, if you're pulling in other people's music into your Ecamm presentation, make sure you have permission to use it or make sure it's royalty free. Whatever the case may be, 
you have to make sure of that because that is that is one thing that will lead to a copyright copyright strike right away. And you don't want that, trust me, because once you get a copyright strike on something like YouTube, they're doing that really to protect you and the copyright holder, but they're doing that to protect you by being proactive and saying to the copyright holder, this account didn't know and we've taken it off and we've limited their ability to send out content. And we've also made them aware of their mistake, yada, yada, yada. So it's a, it's a, not a slap on the wrist. It's more of like a Will Smith across Chris Rock slap on the face type thing. It, it, it'll shut you down for a while. As a matter of fact, I believe uh, they send you to remedial training which is called uh, copyright school in YouTube. I, I'm not kidding. After your first copyright strike. And then that strike remains on your record for three months before it can be expunged. And if you rack up any more copyright strikes in the future, up to three, your channel will be, and all accounts associated with that channel will be permanently banned. So this is not something you want to mess around with. Check with the content copyright holders. You just make sure that whatever you're using, um, and and you, I would also do a lot of research on what's considered fair use. Fair use is often what a lot of content creators will hide behind as a way to say, well, this is public domain. Well, sometimes copyright holders beg to differ with that. And if you, uh, if you upset them enough, they may come after you. So you don't want to put yourself in a position. I like, I've used some content, like short little clips from movies and stuff. And I know I am, I'm walking on thin ice doing that. I, I probably should not be doing that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, my computer is slowly coming back. I, I promised you another, uh, technique. Here, I'll switch you over so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just getting rid of some stuff that I, I don't want displayed. And already the fans are kicking in. Um, but I did want to go over to this scene here. There we go. So, okay, so what's happened here, I, I got to play around with this again. Web stuff, I want to go back to dark mode. There we go. And now I want to size this such that it's just this window. Wow, it's purring like a kitten right now, even though my, my fans are already off to the races. But you can see what's happening. I'm just I'm just sizing this window up. And I think there might be some content here. Yeah, okay. So this is my product review for a product I did called The Claw from Ulanzi. And it's really nice because it's a little clip-in thing. Not endorsing them. They haven't sent me any money or product. Um, I'll just keep reiterating that, that I have not received any product in exchange for any kind of uh, placement or anything like that throughout the entire uh, training series. But let's, let's go ahead and uh, we'll zoom in on this video here. Oops, because I wanted to show you what I did. I don't know if you just caught that, but look what's happening here. Let me, uh, let me zoom in on over here. Okay, there's a glow over my image. Now, how does that work? Well, if you look over on my overlays here, I've got two rectangles. Now, what are these about? Well, if I turn them off, you can see the video is just kind of sitting there and it's actually, it's overlapping to the point where it doesn't look like it's part of the scene, right? And that's not any good. So how do I fix that? Well, you add in a glow. Well, Ecamm doesn't have a glow object per se, but you can use the rectangle shapes, some of the shapes which we created when we did our first scenes, 
to mimic this effect of having a glow. And how did I do that? Well, let me turn it back on. Uh, let's see here. Well, it's not going to look so good against the white background. Let me. Uh, I'll I'll show you the what I did here. So I I told rec I told it a rectangle. That's what I wanted. I wanted a rectangle, and I also said that the color to start with. I'm going to use a gradient fill. The color I'm going to start with is the blue, which is the same blue that's part of this glow from this light tube here. And then I have it going to a, um, well, I don't know. Yeah. So now I have it going to a fully transparent iteration of that blue. And everything else is off. The overall opacity of this I mess with just to kind of control the intensity of the effect. But let's see if I can, let me... Uh, just jump ahead here. Come on. There we go. So now you see that there's no glow over this edge of the image here. But if I turn that semi-transparent rectangle on, look at that. And look at the placement. Okay, so the placement's a little bit off, so how do I fix that? Well, I just select it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this YouTube video alone. I'm just gonna select it and boom. Now, look at the difference. Glow on, glow off. Glow on, glow off. Now, is it a true glow in the sense of like, there's you know, a little bit of roundedness or fall off based on the light source? No, but that's not the effect I was trying to go, go with anyway. But you can see now what I've got is a two two light bulbs that this is just a background that I downloaded from again from Adobe stock. And this is what it looks like normally. You can see how the glow, it's a little bit more intense in the center part here. I'm not trying to achieve that. I could, I could put another object and make it a little bit more intense to give it a bit more glow, but I'm really just trying to create the effect that this video, this one right here, is resting against this background, the wall, if you want to call it that. And so I just turn these back on, and boom, we're done. Okay, this has been a an hour and 15 minute lesson on top of my little diatribe at the beginning. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it now. We covered a lot. We covered setting up all the different types of screen shares we talked about widgets we talked about copyrights talked about using some special effect techniques we've talked about resource management on your computers there's a lot to consider there's a lot to to actually take into consideration when you're laying out one of these scenes but i if you're going to do any kind of screen sharing i can't recommend strongly enough to have your own monitor separate for the applications that you want to share onto Ecamm. And if you can't afford that right now, you're going to have to kind of deal with the situation I've been dealt with, but uh, with this just running the laptop as is. But uh, it's not the end of the world, but it would be nice if you didn't have to uh, struggle while you're trying to do your presentations. But the point is, more than anything else, you're going to have the best looking screen shares and presentations utilizing other applications than anybody else through this method using the functionality of Ecamm and its screen sharing capabilities together with all its content creation capabilities. So that's it. Next episode, next lesson is we're going to be preparing. Uh, oh, sorry. For the next lesson, we're going to be going outside of Ecamm to create our content our graphical content what does that mean that means using other applications to create content whether it's keynote or adobe express or canva we're just going to look at the tools that are available to you and give you a sense of you're not confined with inside ecamm although you as you can see you can do quite a lot but if you had very specific requirements of things that you wanted to do like a lower thirds or some kind of animated element 
you can do that outside of Ecamm pretty quickly if you're familiar with the tool set. You always use the tool set that you're most familiar with. So if you've been a Photoshop jockey your entire life, you're probably gonna be way more comfortable in Photoshop creating graphical elements than inside Ecamm for that matter. So we're gonna go in and look at all the content creation tools that are available to us and then we'll start to drag and drop those into the scene. It's it it's going to be more of an informative slash educational uh, into other tools session, but it's something that I think everybody needs to know because you we've been sticking inside Ecamm most of the time. We're going to go a little bit outside on the next time. So until then, take care and I'll see you around. Bye.